Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of High Voltage Show today. Uh, uh, like I said in the first episode of High Voltage Show, one of our goals is to give you who watch the show something beneficial from every episode you watch. So yeah, that is one of our goals. So today I'm going to talk about the topics that leaves many people anxious which is the student debt the student loan higher education so i remember the level of stress that always rise in my north american friends whenever we start talking about higher education especially student debt and and yeah so well i got to tell you this up front I am not pretending to be an expert in, or a pundit in student debt, but I did some good research and I will provide some helpful insight to begin tackle your student debt as early as after your graduation. And at the end of the show, I will also see um, with you the, the problem of higher education in Haiti, the difficulty that we're facing, etc. So get seated comfortably and I'm gonna, we're gonna talk about student debt. So there is no doubt that college is expensive in, in the US and like in almost everywhere, college is very expensive. Um, especially in the United States where college, the cost of higher education is really um, I know it for a fact, I can tell you, because I've tried to go to college in the U.S. in 2017 when I got accepted in Brooklyn College to do my Master's in Business Administration, MBA. So yeah, I know it. it's like, it's very expensive. So when you form a middle class family and your parents unfortunately don't have the, the um, money to cover for your studies. so. Um, you borrow money from one of the lending institution offering student debt. So that's how it starts. And they also have um, programs that offer um, um, loans to, pa to parents to pay for the children. So, but those ones are like more, um, they have more interest, but the most common one, the one that every, mostly everyone gets is the student loan um, for student. Um, so that's how we start. Um, according to the latest statistics on student loan and debt, there are about 44 million of borrowers who owe collectively $1.5 trillion. $1.5 trillion. They talk now about you, they now they talk about what they call a student debt crisis. It's a crisis. Student debt are now um, student debt is the second largest debt category, second consumer um, debt category after mortgages. So and also a trend analysis show this number will reach two two trillion by 2022 so it's a lot um oh okay uh, this is in the united states like a country like canada where things i mean student debt is not that um um rise the price so the cost of higher education is not that expensive in canada compared to the united states like in canada i remember i've seen the number um which is about um um, 22 billion, 22 billion. They are not in trillion yet. It's only 22 billion, um, and for federal debt, not this number is not including um, the private debt in it. So it's for Canada. Anyway, um, so in the U.S., after you graduate from college, your student loan servicer is waiting for you. They waiting for you, and they will contact you. Like they will contact you if you if your student loan servicer um, doesn't contact you yet, so they most likely don't have your new address. So it's simple. I mean, also, I would say this: 
um, yeah, I can tell you this. Some loan servicer or institution that offering student loan, a court um, give you a six six month deferment period before you require to start making your first payment. So, I mean, it's for the federal um, debt, this one is. So, let's see now what the elected officials from both major parties and DUS have been doing about the student debt crisis. Um, so, the, for the, the Republicans, still loyal to the conservative beliefs, um, less government is better government. So they want the federal government to stop handing out, to stop handing out um, loans to, to students, and they want the private sector to take over. Um, um, and they want the private sector to take over, and, and they expect the competition, so the free market, the market gonna regulate itself. Like, the competition gonna um, um, foster um, the, 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 the interest rate uh, um, to, get, to, to get lower from the, the free market, the competition. And also the Republican, they are concerned when the borrowers um, default their payment, so the taxpayer are the one who are gonna pay for it. It's because according to the national consumer law, um, one out of five um, borrowers default the payment. So the Republican really want that to, uh, to stop. So they want the uh, private sector to take over. Anyway, um, uh, yeah, so that's the perspective. Uh, but what about the Democrats? The Democrats really want the, uh, 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 the federal government to give out more um, loans to students. And I mean, we can see, like, um, in the past election and this, um, this upcoming one of 2020, how the Democrats' candidates, they, some of them promise they're going to do something about it, like they're going to, uh, I mean, um, candidate like Senator, Senator um, Elizabeth Warren, she promised that she have a plan to wipe um, student debt for some category, something. She has a plan that, I mean, I, you can research about it, you will see it. Like this, uh, in this current upcoming election too, um, you see the um, S Senator Cory Booker have a plan about that too. So anyway, both major parties, they w both want to tackle, tackle this, this problem. Although they don't really see things on the same eye and the same angle, but they, both parties, they like agree on the cost of higher education and the student debt crisis, and they understand they need to do something about it. Oh, also I gotta um, also remember the senator of Illinois, Senator Dick Durbin, who recently introduced a bill um, to help those who file for bankruptcy. When you file for bankruptcy, you should be able to um, wipe out your, your, your student debt in it. Anyway, so it, the, the lawmakers, they're trying hard to do something about the student debt crisis. So, so why the Democrat and Republican lawmakers are debating hard on the Senate floor to do something about the student debt crisis. The corporate world seems like he's taking the lead. The, the business, they say, okay, that's why the politicians are busy trying to get an agreement on what to do. So they want to do something about it. Like they, will, they, they will win and they will work on the employee win. So it's like a win-win. So to attract the recent graduates in particular, the companies, they are expanding their, um, their, um, their employees' benefits so, to help reduce the student debt. So I'm going to give you a list of 10, um, of 10 companies 
that that going to help you paying off your student debt faster. So I'm going to give you a list of 10. Actually, there are probably other ones who are doing this, but I have a list of 10 that I researched that I found that like they, it's not like it's not uh, it's not it, it is true. They really do it. You can research and find about it yourself anyway. So I'm going to give you them. So the first one, we have fidelity. Fidelity and um, if fidelity, fidelity is a uh, American multinational uh, financial service corporation um, uh, based in Boston, Massachusetts. They offer and so their debt repayment um, two thousand dollars per year to pay on your student debt. And this amount can go up to um, 10,000 in total. Second one, number two, we have Aetna Incorporation. Aetna is spelled like A-E-T-N-A. -E Aetna Incorporation is a healthcare company um, headquartered in Connecticut. This company offers $2,000 per year and it also can go up to um, 10,000 in total. I mean, for the full-time employee. For, for part-time employee, Aetna will offer you um, 1,000 per year, which can go up to a total of 5,000. Number three, we have Penguin Random House. We, like we probably know, of, you guys who watch, you probably know about Penguin Random House. Penguin Random House is uh, the, the, the world largest publishing book in its category. Um, it's headquartered in, in, in New York. So it's offer it in, to its employee um, $1,200. $1, and it can go up to a total of um, $9,000 in total. Number four. We have Price Price Water House Coopers. Price Water House Coopers, PWC. This is the initials. Um, this company is a um, world like consulting firm. He's, he, this company has its headquarters headquarters in London, United Kingdom. They offer. Um, Twelve hundred dollars on your student uh, to pay on your student debt too. Um, number five, we have Abbott. Abbott is a it's a, it's Abbott. Abbott is a A B B O T T. Abbott is a healthcare company based in Lake Bluff in Illinois. They offer. Uh, oh my gosh, I can't remember how much this one offer, but yeah, you can check it out and find about, um, about um, number six, we have NVIDIA, NVIDIA, N-V-I-D-Y-A. NVIDIA technology is a very big technology company. They are they're into game and, and game. Yeah, it's a very big technology company. They are, they are incorporated in Delaware, but they have their headquarters in, in in California. So listen to this. This company offered 5000 annually. And this amount can go up to 30000 in total to pay in your student debt. This would be this is this would be really really cool. And if you are like, having a lot of debt and you work in the technology in the tech industry, so check um, Nvidia. Um, number seven, number seven, we have um, First Republic. First Republic is a private bank and wealth management company located in, in San Francisco, California. They, they provide to the employee um, $1,200 per year. They offer 
um, $1,800 in the second year. In the third year, they offer $2,400 in all subsequent years. So that's um, how much they offer in, 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 to, in, in the benefit program. So number eight, we have check, C-H-E-G-G. -G. Um, check is, I mean, you, I mean, you, you, prob you probably are very familiar with, uh, with check. I use it myself for my assignment, for to do my homework. It's an um, American education technology company. They're located in, in Santa Clara, California. So this company offer um, $1,000 annually to pay your student debt. Number nine, um, we have Live Nation. Live Nation is an American promoter and venue. They organize um, um, big events and things. So they offer an and so the debt repayment programs one hundred dollars per month, and this amount can go up to six thousand dollars in total. And the last one, Staples. Staples offer to its full-time um, employee to pay on the student loan repayment twelve hundred dollars per year, and this amount can go up to thirty-six hundred dollars. So this is this is a list of ten companies that offer money. Beside your salary, they allow you to pay your student loan faster. So check them out. Like if you recently graduate, if you have your six month deferment period until you require to make your first uh, payment, and the sixth months you can try to apply and try to get a job for one of this one company if they are in your field of service so yeah um, now let me say something I'm, I have friends when I said that I'm gonna talk about student debt they asked me what about Haiti how you how young students do how they um, how they do how when they graduate from high school, so what they do? Well, I gotta tell you this. Unfortunately, we don't have that in Haiti. Um, the banks and the other financial institutions, they, they are not interested in giving student loan. First of all, on the technical approach of the questions, Let's say that they would give a bank like a Haitian bank or a, a financial institution would give you a loan. There are very few opportunities for young students who graduated from college to enter the work, the, 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 the labor market. There are not too much opportunity. And one of the things that make it really difficult for financial institutions in Haiti to give student loans is the fact that life is that guarantee. You can give like, let's say you lend a student um, $10,000 to fund his, to pay for its, its, its college studies. And wait, something bang, something happened. The student got shot, or the student died, or something. It's like this institution would have an insurance itself for its money. So this is the technical approach of it. Like it's from a business point of view. I, if I was like a businessman in, in such level, I would be reluctant to to give out loan. But there is another thing. Let's. There is another consideration. This, the Haitian society, like it is right now, I'm telling you, I'm not gonna hide anything. They don't really care if you wanna do your college study or not. Actually, we only have one state university, the UEH, UEH. This state university only accepts 25% of its applicant. And I can tell you, the number of applicants they have, it's huge. It's really huge. 
And but let's see what's doing like the society. Let's take a look in, in the Congress, like in, in, in the public administrations. Most of the public server, the, the Congress, they don't have a college degree. They don't. They don't have a college degree. And let's say someone like me, someone like other young, um, not other men that complete, graduate from high school, go to college, do some good studies, and they will try to run for office, who do you think the corporation would fund? They would rather fund those one who doesn't have any degree at all. I'm telling you, you can do it. Check it. Let's, if you go, if you check and research on the Haitian Congress, you will find probably only 30% of the representatives on the senators have a college degree. It's terrible. I'm feeling really sad about it. I'm feeling really sad to say this, but it is true. And the public administration, the public server, they don't have a degree. So that's why you, um, it's like in this society, they like, they feel fine with just, um, with guys who are taking decisions for the whole country. Guys who just have, um, they, they just like four fifth um, graders they are, or sixth graders, like in the, in the Senate. You can find some um, senators with, they're like eighth graders or seventh graders. And the representatives, it's worse. Actually, there are some case of exception. Like I said, there's 30 persons that have a college degrees. There might be doctors, like doctors, lawyers. Um, uh, so now you would probably understand why Haiti is such in a bad shape. Because our political decisions were not made by people who have the good logic, good logic, who study for that. So it's terrible. Anyway. I wanted to say all those things and to prove and to show the world why, I mean, those are not the only reason that Haiti is such in a bad shape, but we, I'm saying those things not to criticize badly Haiti, it's just to let you know, guys, know what's going on, and in the next election, we got to do something. You Haitian who's watching, we should have awareness against this. Like really, really awareness. We better start doing something about it. Our decision, our big, major political decision, economy, finance, social, they gotta be taken by people who study for that. The right person in the right place. Anyway, I don't care if I'm gonna be in trouble for that, or I'm gonna I criticize them. It's just the truth. I'm sick and tired of it. I'm not saying that. I want to make them move back. But whenever you see a Haitian politician, take a look, check. See what is his background. What is he doing? All right. So yeah, I wanted to talk about it today too because I was sick and tired of that for so long. So like I've seen in other countries, how people have been doing, how they've been elected, um, people with good background, with good credentials. So that's making me feel bad for so long. So I wanted to say this. All right. Um, I hope to see you again on our next episode for another show of High Voltage. And um, yeah, the tension was once again raised, rising in this show again. So that's how it is. It's High Voltage. That's the show. And continue to keep, keep in touch with us on Facebook, YouTube, and on other social media platforms. Connect with us. Um, yeah. I'm looking forward to see you again for the next um, show. Until the next time, bye-bye.